Hello, this is Dr. Liu. Um, in the previous video, I introduced to you what a kinetic energy expression is. And in this video, I want to talk about work and the work kinetic energy theorem. So let's recall kinetic energy, EK or K, is one half mv squared. And we know the unit is a joule. And the one joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And it can also be written as one newton per one newton meter, not per meter, sorry. One newton meter. So uh, you may wonder where does the kinetic energy come from? Where does an object obtain kinetic energy? Well, um, it's, it's not that hard. Uh, we talked about, uh, say, uh, a projectile being tossed, well, that um, whatever is tossing it, say it's maybe your hand, maybe a coiled up spring that gives an object, a projectile, its kinetic energy. So um, it pushes the object to accelerate it, right? Since kinetic energy is related to speed, right? It's, so it just the object just has to be accelerated. That means there has to be a force. And uh, to accelerate to a certain amount of uh, speed, you you would apply the force for some duration. So this is where that unit is coming from. Apply a force against an object and make sure you move that object along a direction so that you can accelerate the object and then you'll be giving the object uh, its kinetic energy. So this is basically how energy is transferred. Um, it's from, uh, from force pushing and sustaining uh, over a, uh, a distance. So uh, here is, we'll define work. This is how energy is transferred. So work W is equal to a force times this X is a displacement. So for now, we're just thinking about here's an object has a mass M and uh, it has no other force apply to it maybe it's on a very slippery surface like a like a glider on an air track so you apply your only force and the object moves so it has moved over here and you are applying that force constantly for this whole duration the object has moved a distance of x so how much energy um, has been uh, put into the uh, object is actually this F times X. And this will be apparently increasing the object's kinetic energy. If the object has no kinetic energy, this quantity will be the object's entire kinetic energy. But if it, the object is already moving, say to the right, it's already moving. Uh, say, let's just put a dot here for no moving. Uh, v equals zero. Here's, here's a longer there's a long arrow that means the velocity has increased but what if you are already having some velocity and then you just end up having more right so uh, well what if you had uh, a velocity that points this way though well uh, applying force like this the object will probably initially still move to the left until it slowed down stopped and then being dragged to the right so uh, if you still count the displacement, not the whole distance going back and forth, just starting here, ending here, and uh, this will be probably less speed because um, the, uh, the force has to slow down the object and stop it, right? So um, anyway, the, uh, um, the, the work done here is, um, um, is the uh, the force times the displacement how much energy is basically transferred into the object okay so uh, let's move on to uh, um, to this uh, work energy theorem that we were we were describing so the work energy or work kinetic energy theorem is saying that the work done is equal to the increase of kinetic energy. So plainly speaking, it's just K 
kinetic energy 2, that's a later kinetic energy, minus kinetic energy 1. Or you can say 1 half mv2 squared, let's rewrite that square, minus 1 half mv1 squared. So the, the increase of kinetic energy, or the later minus the earlier, is entirely due to work. Okay. So um, what this theorem can tell you is uh, basically how much kinetic energy can you give to an object. Right, you uh, you basically you uh, you you can you can you can observe the change of kinetic energy, and then you can infer how much work is done, right? So um, let's try to expand work a little bit because this is a very simple situation where uh, there's only one force, right? One force and uh, and there's a displacement. This is how much work is done by that force. So let's first uh, expand. Again, so let's first expand the uh, the direction of force a little bit, so that we can see the effect of uh, of doing positive zero and negative work. So work done by this force now f and x. So I'll leave enough space so I can draw my boxes. So instead of pulling horizontally, um, I'm going to pull at an angle. So how effective is this in doing work? Well, here's an angle. And let's assume that uh, we're, we're near Earth. So we're, we're near Earth's surface. Yes, okay, it's touching the surface below. So there will be some uh, gravity down and normal force up. And this angled force will only have this much forward and this much upward. Right, so you can call this Fx forward and this is Fy upward. So work done, uh, same situation you, uh, you, you drag an object forward for displacement x. I still have this force F and uh, because there's an angle only this forward portion is, is along the direction of your displacement, and this upward portion is not. So you only want the forward portion of the force. So cosine angle. This angle is between the force and the displacement. So this subscript just described what, ang what, the ang what angle this is. This is the angle between the first two things. So uh, sometimes it's also written as F times D. So uh, just be... Uh, Careful here, let me try this other way. Okay, F and D. Okay, so what this tells us is your effect of, uh, of the wor work, well, the, well, the force's effect of doing work, it, uh, it depends on the angle between the direction of displacement. So this will, will be a displacement direction of D or direction of X. Uh, doesn't really matter which symbol we use. So uh, this is displacement and this is force. So the effect that of that angle is it kind of dilutes the force's effect to, to, to do work. So as the, uh, the angle goes higher, and we'll, we'll, find, we'll realize that, okay, at 90 degree angle, the, the work is zero. So a force that is perpendicularly applied to the direction of motion does not do work. So forces that include for example, this box moving situation, this, it includes gravity. Gravity doesn't do any work because it is perpendicular to this horizontal direction of motion. Normal force also does not do work. It is also perpendicular to the direction of motion. And, um, and this force, applied force, its vertical component doesn't do work because it's perpendicular. And this horizontal component does do work because it's parallel, right? So this is uh, this is how you could do zero work if you're perpendicular. This is direction of D, or you can use X. So you can do zero work if you're perpendicular to the direction of motion. And if you start applying force 
uh, more than 90 degrees. So uh, let's draw a situation here. Let's let's do when this angle equals 90 degrees, work equals zero. So when the angle is above 90 degrees, this cosine becomes negative. So the work is less than zero. So, so this is basically how to take energy, kinetic energy away from the system. It's just basically by pulling backward, you're slowing down, right? Slowing down, taking kinetic energy away. So you could have a, a box that looks like this and it's already on its way to the right, it's already moving, but you apply a force like this. So, uh, this is not good. Let me draw uh, with a ruler. So, let's assume this is the uh, displacement. Okay, all the way over here. All right. So, there's this angle, force and displacement. So that's displacement. So, it goes from here to here. And you can call this X or D. So displacement is forward, but the uh, the force is is partially backward. So now we have we have the force doing negative work, taking energy away. So no, this this has told us is work can be positive zero or negative depending on the angle. It could also be somewhere in between depending on which way you're moving, which way the force is applied. And then, try to expand this again. Network will be net force times the displacement, then cosine of the net force with displacement angle. So, uh, another way to, to do this, you can also do, uh, instead of doing the net force, adding all the forces together, you can say, well, it's a sum of all the other uh, work done by each force. So this sometimes is more convenient. For example, this situation where you have gravity, and gravity's work is zero because it's perpendicular to the, to the direction of motion. Normal force also does not do work. And then this force alone is responsible for doing work. So we take its horizontal component because its vertical component is not doing work. So you can use this and say that there's only one force, its component is doing work. The other forces do zero work. And over here, what you can do is you can combine all the forces and that also works over here. Combining all the forces, vertical forces will all cancel each other and horizontal forces, there's only one such force. What if there are more forces? Okay, so you combine them all together and uh, get that one net force and then you uh, you use that net force in, in this expression to calculate the work done, the net work done. So then we can expand the, uh, the work kinetic energy theorem into net work done so you can use either this way to figure out net, for, uh, net force to get the work or just sum up all the other uh, work done by each force is your choice. So net work done is equal to the increase of kinetic energy instead of work done by just a single force. So this becomes more complete expression of how to, um, how to calculate kinetic energy and, and, and work theorem. So the, uh, in the application, I can say that, okay, so um, net force d cosine theta, this is one possible um, expression. So v2 squared minus one half and v1 squared. So this gives you an equation, this theorem gives you an equation. So this equation can help you solve one unknown. And that really depends on what's given to you, what's not. For example, if you know the mass of an, an object, you know the, the final and initial speeds of the object, and you also uh, you were given something about the object on the left side, say how far it traveled, 
and maybe there's a there's a pulling force at an angle and uh, you also know there's a no other forces in the horizontal direction you can find out that force from this equation anyway this is just one way to express work and energy theorem we can use that uh, to do some calculations thank you